Hello, welcome to the dark side of the library. I'm your host, Carrie, with my creepy co-host, Katie, who's also here. Hello. Today, we are going to bring you the interesting, dark, non-fiction reads for August 2023 that we see coming out. We have not read any of these because they're not out yet, <laughs> but we find them intriguing and they're on our TBR list. And so we wanted to share them with you. And I'm going to ask Katie to get us started today. Sure. Sure. The first book on my list today is 101 Horror Books to Read Before You're Murdered. Ooh, oh. somebody's planning it. Uh, <laughs> well, might be me. <gasps> Just kidding. Gary! We're cousins. We're <laughs> loving cousins. This is by Sadie Hartman, and it comes out August 8th. So this says, curious readers and fans of Monsters and the, Maca and the Macabre, get ready to bulk up your TBR piles. Oh no, mine's already huge, and I'm sure <laughs> yours are is too. <laughs> Indulge your heart's darkest desires to be terrified, unsettled, disgusted, and heartbroken with stories that span everything from paranormal hauntings and creepy death cults to small town terrors and apocalyptic disasters. Ooh, yes. Yes. Uh, there are recommend recommendations that include full synopsis as well as a quick overview of the book's theme, style, and tone so you can narrow down your next read at a glance. So let me, I'm kind of curious what is in here. It just says, here's some books, but it doesn't say which books are in here. Well, so, you gotta buy it to find out. <laughs> I I know, but what That's if how we they get your money? <laughs> oh, evil! So, if you are curious about some really awesome, cl probably classic reads, or just some really substantial horror reads, check out 101 Horror Books to Read Before You Are Also Murdered by Sadie Hartman. I'm I'm buying it. <laughs> so. My first book today would be a fantastic book for the geeky cat lady in your life or the cat person. It is Cat Magic, spelled with a CK. Mm. Harness the powers of felines through history, behaviors, and familiars. It's a hardcover book by Rika Moonsong. It comes out August 8th from Rock Point. The cover has a black cat with glowing golden eyes sitting under a full moon and the stars. It's beautiful. So the book delves into the magical role of cats as familiars and how to connect and strengthen your relationship with them. Different breeds, colorings, and behavioral characteristics excuse me, of cats and how those affect your partnership. Oh, I usually have had orange kitties. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're very fun. <clears throat> how to safely work with a familiar in your practices using discarded parts of your feline friend like shed whiskers, claws, and fur. Don't go get those items. Let them naturally fall off. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> the Cat Magic book also dives into the history of cats, myths, and folklore, specifically some of the myths surrounding black cats. You're going to learn how to call feline guides and familiars to you. And I just made a new kitty friend <gasps> at my vacation house. Ooh. And she'll come up and sit on her laps outside. She's an orchard cat, but very friendly. Aww. And how to create fur talismans. So this book is for all the cat lovers that do magic. It's Cat Magic by Rika Moonsong. And I have another book that I'm going to butt in and someday I'll let Katie talk. But my next book is Disney, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, the full film script. It's Whoa. part of the Disney scripted classic series. Comes out August 15 by the editors of Canterbury Classics. It has a purple cover showing Jack and Sally on top of the spiral hill in front of the moon. I don't personally feel the need to read through the Nightmare Before Christmas script. I could probably perform the entire movie by myself on a moment's notice because <laughs> I've seen it hundreds of times. <laughs> I would love to see that. You should do well, it. Bring over some vodka. <laughs> Feed it to me. <laughs> but inside, the book has all these pictures of the making of the movie and decorations and illustrations and sketches and it's very colorful and pretty it's you're not just reading the script completely by itself i'm definitely going to add this to my very very large collection of nightmare before christmas books so it's the full film script from disney scripted classics it comes out august 15 and now it's katie's turn yay yay this one I'm really excited about, except for it's $115, so you know <laughs> this is academic. <laughs> Don't die. I thought you were supposed wow. to kill me. 
<laughs> so this is called Dreams, Vampires, and Ghosts, Anthropological Perspectives on the Sacred and Psychology in Film and Television. It has a cool cover. I really like it. It says, Drawing from Social Theory and the Anthropology of Religion, this book explores popular media's fascination with dreams, vampires, demons, ghosts, and spirits. This book does so in the light of contemporary animist studies of societies in which other than human persons are not merely a source of entertainment, but a lived social reality. Film and television programs explored include Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Twin Peaks, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Truly Madly Deeply, and the films of Hitchcock. Our author, Louise Child, draws attention to how they both depict and challenge ideas and practices rooted in psychology, while quality television has also facilitated a wave of programming that can explore the interaction of characters in complex social worlds over time. In addition to drawing on theories of film from Freudian psychology and feminist theory, this book uses approaches derived from a combination of Jungian film studies and anthropology that offer fresh insights for exploring film and television. You can see this is a very educational book. And I dig it. If I had time, I would probably sit and read through it. It is only 194 pages. It's not that long. Oh, it's a dollar a page. It <laughs> is a dollar a page. <laughs> it is Dreams, Vampires, and Ghosts, Anthropological Perspectives on the Sacred and Psychology in Film and Television by Louise Child. My next book is a wonderful coffee table book. It's called Haunted Air. It comes out August 15th. It's by Ossian Brown, and of all the people in the world that could write the introduction, they got David Lynch to write it. <gasps> yes! Cool! So it's a collection of anonymous Halloween photographs from America, dating back to 1875 and culminating in the year 1955. Hmm. The book is going to give us a little brief preview of the history of Halloween, the ancient pre-Christian Celtic festival of Samhain, a feast to mark the death of the old year and the birth of the new. The photographs in Haunted Air provide an extraordinary glimpse into the traditions of this macabre festival from ages past, and they form an important document of photographic history. These are the pictures of the dead, family portraits, mementos of the treasured. They're torn from album pages, and they've been sold for pennies and scattered, and people gathered them together into this book. It's Haunted Air. I can't wait to look through it. Yeah. It's by Ossian Brown. That sounds very cool. I like that. My next book is Invisible Enemies, Stories of Infectious Disease, and it comes out August 1st. It's by Jeanette Farrell, and this is actually for reading ages 12 through 18. It's a little more approachable if you are learning about, like, the plague or smallpox. <laughs> and it's a third edition of a 1998 original book by Jeanette Farrell. So it talks, it has gripping stories of mankind's struggles against the deadliest diseases in human history. That includes things like malaria, leprosy, uh, and cholera. And this is updated to reflect new medical and social developments, such as the continuing ravages of AIDS around the world, the bioterror threat posed by smallpox eradication, and an all new chapter on the Ebola crisis, illustrated with more than 50 reproductions of photographs, newspaper cartoons, public health posters, and the like. So this book is an intense and intriguing mix of history, biography, and biology. It was the Scientific American Young Reader Book Award winner. So that's pretty cool. And I think I would rather have an approachable book about deadly diseases than something super in detail. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's just me yeah. though uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway so this is Invisible Enemies uh, edition 3 stories of the infectious disease by Jeanette Farrell we are halfway through our episode and I just wanted to pause to remind you that if you're interested in any of these books you can check out our show notes that have Amazon affiliate links to help you go buy them more easily <laughs> so my next book is A Life with Ghosts True Terrifying and Insightful Tales from My Favorite Haunts. It's by S Steve Gonsalves. 
who's already considered to be one of the top paranormal investigators in the world and a pioneer in the industry. He was on the smash hit TV series Ghost Hunters, also Ghost Hunters Academy, and travel channel channel show Ghost Nation. So he, in this book, he presents a collection of his most meaningful paranormal experiences from some of his favorite haunted locations. He's going to share the compelling history of each location and then recount his own terrifying experiences with disembodied voices, haunting EVPs, mysterious dark masses, and other unexplained phenomena, in addition to what he learned about living through a life with ghosts. He tells heartwarming, hilarious, and profound stories, reflecting the fun-loving personality that's garnered him a million of fans. So that is A Life with Ghosts, Terrifying and Insightful Tales from My Favorite Haunts by Steve Gonsalves. That one sounds interesting. I never got into the Ghost Hunters train, but I know a lot of people love Ghost Hunters. You know, I would have liked maybe the first couple years of it, but when all of a sudden the Travel Channel turned into the Paranormal Channel... (laughs) I mean, I love dark books and goth and horror and all that, but it was too much. I'm like, I'm trying to watch a show about going to Italy. What happened? Right. It was too much. It was. I agree with that. This next book I'm really curious about because it's something I've always wanted to do, but for some reason I've never gotten into. It's a book called Reading Tea Leaves, Discover What Brews in Your Future, Daily (gasps) Divination. I have a cup of tea right now. Oh, shoot. I used a tea bag. Oh, (laughs) No! (laughs) This comes out August 15th. It's by April Wall. You can get it and not use tea bags and hopefully read (laughs) your your daily divination. Uh, So it says, brew a cup of tea and see what awaits in your future. With this beautifully illustrated comprehensive guide to the ancient art of tea leaf reading. Reading tea leaves is the perfect resource to master the ancient practice of tea leaf reading, also known as, okay, hopefully I don't butcher this, tassiography, and will teach you everything you need to know and interpret the hidden messages that lie in the shapes of the tea leaves. Our author, April Wall, is a spirit-led psychic intuitive Uh, She provides an easy explanation to all aspects of the practice and what you can discover about yourself, the future, and the divination power of reading tea leaves. For years, she has performed tea leaf readings for clients in search of answers. This beautifully illustrated guide compiles her years of knowledge and real-life experience to teach you how to confidently interpret over a hundred consistent tea leaf patterns and configurations. Whoa. Whoa. You know what we should do? We should do a Amazon live stream and we'll send it to YouTube as well. And we'll do divination with our tea leaves and you can watch and laugh at us. (laughs) That would be really fun. It is really interesting to kind of see what the um, example she has posted in here. So like a bear or a bat. So clearly a ton of animal symbols. And then we have like a lamp leaves i don't know why (laughs) leaves. okay yeah so there's some examples in here on on that plus one chapter that i find interesting is that where there's a chapter on the history of tea leaves or tea tea leaf reading a glossary so it's probably very easy to sift through and see hey i just saw a bear in my tea leaf what does that mean (laughs) so that's pretty cool if you're interested in this too this is called reading tea leaves by april wall My next book, I'm struggling to pronounce her name, and I've never heard of her, but it's about a Mexican artist, Remedios Varo. I hope I said that right. Mm. It comes out August 22. It's an exploration of the captivating work and mystical outlook of the modern artist Remedios Varo, focusing on her years in Mexico. She lived between 1908 and 1963. She emigrated from Spain to Mexico City back in 1941. Her work from 1955 to 63 uh, made a lasting contribution to modern art and the legacy of surrealism. So in Remedios Varo science fictions, fresh historical and material findings establish the relationship between her layered interests in alchemy, architecture, magic, mysticism, philosophy, and science, and her beguiling technical approach to art making. There's essays with specific works, complete stories, and showing the spectacular services. There's an illustrated taxonomy of her artistic techniques, including automatic mark making. Look Mm. up what that means. 
very interesting, and they have an illustrated inventory of a major portion of her library published for the first time. Ooh. I'm probably not going to purchase this, but I'm going to go to my library and check it out. The publisher is the Art Institute of Chicago. The book comes out August 22, and that's Remedios Varo, Science Fictions. My next book is called Spellbound, The Secret Secret. Oh, I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> the Secret <It's> okay. <laughs> Grimoire of Lucy Cavendish. Ooh. So you can learn your craft, cast spells, and watch your life become magical. So this is a book that's supposed to empower you. Spellbound is about connecting you to the magic that's inside of you and activating this transformative power. Mm. Come on a mystical journey with Australia's most loved and respected witch, Lucy Cavendish, as she takes you into the secret world of spellcasting. Watch your life become the magical experience it was always meant to be. Learn how and why spells work, history of spells, magical symbols to use in your spells, dressing magically. What? There's dressing magically? I didn't know. That sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, And also there's certain rules about spell casting as well that she goes over. So if you're just looking for kind of, I would say an introduction book to spell casting, if this is something of interest to you, check out Spellbound. This is by Lucy Cavendish. My next book is Storyland. A New Mythology of Britain. It comes out August 22. It's by Amy Jeffs. The publisher is the esteemed Andrews McMeal Publishing. Storyland is an exquisitely illustrated new mythology of Britain set in its wildest landscapes. Amy Jeffs is a historian and a printmaker, and she reimagines ancient legends in wondrous detail in a giftable coffee table book for all lovers of myth, folklore, and mysticism. It begins between the creation and Noah's flood, and it follows the footsteps of the earliest generation of giants, covers the founding of Britain, England, Wales, and Scotland. It covers the birth of Christ, the wars between the Britons, the Saxons, and the Vikings, and it closes with the arrival of the Normans. These are retellings of medieval tales of legend, landscape, and the yearning to belong, inhabited by characters now half-remembered, Arthur, Brutus, Albina, who I've never heard of, and more, so I need to read this. Readers will visit beautiful sacred places that include prehistoric monuments like Stonehenge and Wayland Smithy, mountains and lakes such as Snowdon and Loch Etive, and rivers including the Ness, the Soar, and the Storied Thames. That is Storyland, a new mythology of Britain, and I think I might surprise Katie with it for Christmas. Oh, darn it! <gasps> I'm surprised Spoiler now. Alert. I'm surprised. <laughs> I will Merry probably Christmas. forget. Thank you. <laughs> My next book is Tales and Legends of the Devil, The Many Guises of the Primal Shapeshifter. This comes out August 29th, and I apologize for the name. I'm going to attempt it. It is French. It is Claude and Corinne Licatu uh, as our authors. So they explore the many forms and abilities of the devil in stories from all around the world, although they tend to focus more in Europe, understandably, the center of Christianity. So it draws on folk traditions from all over Europe, like Transylvania, Romania, Bulgaria, Albania, Switzerland, Italy, France, Scandinavia, and some of the Baltic countries. We trace the devil's shape-shifting powers back to their Vedic origins in ancient India and looks at his connections with witches and storm magic. That's a chapter I'm very excited about. Uh, Reveals how many of the qualities and magical powers attributed to the devil were once those belonging to pagan gods, so the horned god in some of the Celtic myths is one that's pretty common that people can draw to. So the devil has many more guises than the cliche red boogeyman named Lucifer or Satan who haunts <laughs> Christianity. In some traditions, the devil is sinister and cunning, while others portray him as an oaf who can easily be conned and evaded by anyone with an ounce of cleverness. Ooh, I wanna... Now that's more fun to read about. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, in other tales and legends, legends, he is the primal shapeshifter and the Roma also known as the Gypsies, claimed his talents of metamorphosis were so strong he could even assume the appearance of a priest. They explain how the devil's limp or his goat-like feet 
reflect the prevalence in world mythology of the sacred nature of crippling injuries. Oh. They have a lot of interesting things. Like, they examine the symbolic implications of the appearance of the devil in these tales. Like, I didn't realize that he was shown limping in some of the, like, some art and myths. So they talk about those things as well. So... This sounds really interesting. If you want to learn about, I guess, our quote devil and his many forms and how he's changed over time, check out Tales and Legends of the Devil, The Many Guises of the Primal Shapeshifter. This is by Claude and Corinne Likitu, and this comes out August 29th. My next book was gushed about by Liberty Hardy over on the Book Riot podcast that I was listening to in the car yesterday. So I'm so excited to talk about it here too. It's The Underworld Journeys to the Depths of the Ocean. It's by Susan Casey. Liberty Hardy was mentioning that she is terrified of sharks, as am I. I'm known for it. I will not step into the ocean past my knees because of that. I'm ready to kick one in the face anyway. Yes. (laughs) So this book is about the deep, Deep ocean. Deep ocean. Yeah. Susan Casey is a chronicler of the aquatic world. To write this book, she traversed the globe. She joined scientists and explorers on dives to the deepest places on the planet. I believe Liberty said she went 32,000 feet down in a submersible. Holy cow. Yeah. She takes us on a fascinating journey through the history of deep sea exploration from the myths and legends of the ancient world to storied shipwrecks that we can now reach on the bottom, to the first bathysphere pilots, and to the scientists who are just beginning to understand the mind-blowing complexity and ecological importance of the quadrillions of creatures who live in realms long thought to be devoid of life. She is going to talk about how vital the deep is to the future of the planet and how urgent it is we understand it in a time of increasing threats from climate change, industrial fishing, pollution, and the mining companies that are exploring it. This is a very serious read, but I find it's going to be very fascinating because we don't know a lot about the dark part of the ocean. No. This is The Underworld Journeys to the Depths of the Ocean by Susan Casey, and it comes out August 1st. You know, I actually might have to pick that one up. It's not ordinarily something I would read, but um, that does terrify me as well. I think it terrifies (laughs) everybody because there's so much we don't know about our own planet, and yet we're trying to leave it. (laughs) <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So the final book today is actually a cookbook because we can't help ourselves. Uh, it is the unofficial Wednesday cookbook recipes inspired by the deliciously macabre TV show. It comes out August 29th, which is perfect timing for potential maybe season two of Wednesday for Halloween Ooh. time. That'd be awesome. This is by I. Th- Ephigenia Jones. I'm sure I said that incorrectly. I'm so sorry. All right. So you can grab your favorite knives, guillotines, and other torture devices and join Wednesday Adams on a culinary journey through Nevermore, Jericho, and beyond. There are 66 deliciously dark and twisted recipes that are inspired by the Netflix show. So you'll see some really interesting ones. I see some really cool pictures on here as well. This looks pretty well put together, even if it isn't technically official. So we have a taxidermied mushrooms dish, a gorgon, Zola, and pear salad. (laughs) (laughs) That one was great. Uh, A spaghetti al Nero, a goo goulash muck. Oh, Oh, jeez. Piranha (laughs) punch. That was a great introduction scene. We have, quote, secret ginger snaps. So we can follow our favorite quirky goth girl and her awesome family and make all of these amazing dishes and sit and watch the next season of Wednesday all together. Uh, So check out the unofficial Wednesday cookbook. And uh, it has some great photos in here I'm seeing. And they look pretty approachable as far as like recipes go. So that is our final list of all of the nonfiction books that we found interesting in August of 2023. Make sure to stay tuned for the rest of our podcast episodes that are going to be published every Wednesday and Friday. We still have some really spooky kids books, which are very exciting. YA, comic books, etc. 
Uh, make sure to comment on your favorite listening app or over on YouTube and join us on our socials at Dark Side of the Library and, of course, our Amazon shopping channel. You'll see us do a lot more live streams as Halloween and Christmas, spooky Christmas, is, yes. <laughs> is approaching. Uh, so thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.